Hello, hello, students. Welcome back to Accounting 1329, Payroll and Business Tax Accounting. Once again, this is Dr. Mercado speaking. And in this lecture, we are continuing covering Chapter 3, which deals with Social Security taxes. Okay. In this particular lecture, we are covering Problem 36A from the Payroll Accounting 2023 edition. Okay. So let's jump over to the problem. That way, we don't waste any time. Okay. So the problem states as follows. Audrey Martin and Beth James are partners in the country gift shop, which employs the individuals listed below. Paychecks are distributed every Friday to all employees. Based on the information given, compute the amounts listed below for a weekly payroll period. So we are calculating payroll for a week. Okay, And then we have the information. We have Sina Verton. She works in the office and she gets paid $700 per week. We have Nicole Norge gets paid $2,980 a month, and works in sales. Then we've got Bet uh, Mert, works in delivery. Uh, he makes $650 a week. Then we have Audrey Martin, who is a partner. Um, she, has, she gets paid $950 a week. And we have Beth James gets paid $950 a week, okay, and also a partner. Okay. So we are being asked to calculate the OASDI taxable earnings the OASDI tax, the HI taxable earnings, and the HI tax, okay? Now, um, so I basically set up the same thing. What do I have here? I have a setup of exactly the same thing. I just copied the information over to my Excel. That way I could work off of it, okay? So these are the fields we have to complete, okay? Now, um, on your book, it does give you the tax rates, uh, the 2022 tax rates for the employee and the employer portions of the tax are... 6.2% uh, for OASDI with a limit of 147,000. So what does that base mean? It means that once an employee reaches $147,000, anything above 147, they do not have to pay any more OASDI tax. So that is my cap, okay? So the maximum that an employee can pay in OASDI taxes is $9,114 a year, okay? So that is my cap. So you, if you have those higher earning employees, you have to always watch out to make sure that that cap is not reached. Once it's reached, the employee will no longer have to pay the OASDI tax. Okay. If the employee doesn't pay it, then that means the employer doesn't have to pay it either. So this applies to both the employee and the employer. Once that cap is reached, no more taxes will have to be paid. Okay. Now for the HI tax, the rate is 1.45%. There is no limit and no maximum, which means that I don't care if the employee makes 200,000, 300,000, they're still going to continue to pay 1.45% of taxes for HI purposes, okay? So HI does not have a cap, but OASDI does, and that cap changes every year, okay? So we need to constantly be updating it, okay? Now, let's um, get ready to work on the problem. So we have Sina, the first employee, gets paid $700 per week. Now remember, we have a cap of $147,000. They don't give you the cumulative pay. So I don't know how much this employee has earned year to date because we need to know if that employee is close to that limit. Now in this case, we don't have to worry about it, okay, because we can just kind of like ballpark it. So I know that this employee, her uh, Sina, gets paid 700 bucks a week and there's 52 weeks in a year. So this employee in a year is going to make $36,400, which is way below the cap. So I don't even have to worry about the cap for Sina. Now let's look for Nicole. Let's just see if we have to worry about that cap on any of our employees. Nicole gets paid $29.80 a month. We're going to multiply that by 12 months. So Nicole is in the range of about 35760 which is also way below our cap. Okay. Uh, Bob makes 650 a week, so I'm sure he's not going to be close. So we're looking at 33800 which is way below the cap. And then we've got Audrey and Beth get 950. We're going to multiply by 52 weeks. They get 49,400. So just by doing a general analysis of how much they get, they're getting paid, we know that none of these employees are going to go over that cap of 147, which tells me that all of their earnings are going to be taxable. Okay. So 
Having said that, um, now we have to fill in the column that says OASDI taxable earnings. How much of their salary is going to be taxable? Okay, so like I said, everything is taxable until they reach that cap of 147. None of my employees are reaching that cap. Okay, so let's work on Cena first. That means that the $700 that Cena made this week are going to be taxable. So my taxable earnings is the amount that was earned. Okay, so everything that Cena earned this week is going to be subject to tax. Now that I know that, I can calculate my tax. Okay, so I can get my $700 times my 6.2% for OASDI. That's going to give me a tax of $43.40. Okay. For HI purposes, there is no cap, so everything is taxable. The whole $700 is taxable, okay? And then we can calculate the HI tax. My HI tax is 700 times 1.45%, and that's going to give me $10.15 of tax, okay? We're going to repeat the same thing for Nicole. There's just a trick. Nicole... The information provided for Nicole is on a monthly basis and we pay weekly. So we need to convert Nicole's pay into a weekly pay. Okay, so how do we do that? What we're going to do is we're going to get the 2,980 and we're going to multiply it by 12 months. Okay, to get the annual salary. So we've got 2,980 times 12 months. That's going to give me 35,760. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to divide the annual amount by 52 weeks in a year. Okay. So we get 52 weeks. And then that's going to give me 687.692. We look at that third digit. If it's less than a five, we keep that second digit as is. So that means that the weekly pay is going to be 687.69. And I typed it incorrectly. It's 687.6. Oh my God, what is wrong with me? 687.69. There we go. 687.69. That is what we got on the calculator. Okay. 687.69. So the weekly pay is for Nicole is 687.69. So how much is taxable for OASDI purposes? The 687.69. Okay, so now that we have that, we have the 687.69, we're going to multiply by the 6.2%, and that's going to give me 42.636. We look at that third digit, that third digit is greater than a 5, that means that I'm going to round that second digit up by 1, so that's going to give me 42.64. Be very careful on your rounding, it's a very common mistake students make. The HI taxable earnings are the same, 687.69. Once we get the 687.69, we're going to multiply by the HI rate of 1.45%, and that's going to give me 997. Okay, 997. Okay, so we're going to continue with Bob. Bob makes 650 a week, so we're going to go ahead and what is taxable for the week for Bob? the entire 650, okay? So we're gonna calculate the tax, the OASDI tax for Bob. So we have 650 times 6.2%. That will give me $40.30, okay? For um, HI, what is taxable? The entire 650 is taxable. Everything that he earned that week is subject to be taxed. So we're going to get the 650 times 1.45%, and that's going to give me 9.425. That third digit is a 5, which means we're going to round up that second digit to a 3. It'll be 9.43, okay? Now we get to Audrey, and here we have to be very careful. Audrey and Beth are both partners. 
Okay, so we need to go back and we re need to read this section in chapter two that deals with partnerships. Okay, so it says partners are generally not employees of the partnership. Okay, in some cases, however, a partnership may operate as an association that may be classified as a corporation. If classified as a corporation, any partner who renders services similar to those of a corporate officer would be an employee. Okay, if it's a corporation. Now, if it's just a regular partnership, the money received each week by the partners is considered a drawing or withdrawal, not a salary. So these partners are deducting or making withdrawals from the business, but that is not considered a salary. Okay. So for purposes of this partnership, um, Audrey and Beth are not employees, which means that they are not considered uh, or they're not, they don't fall into the threshold of being employees. Therefore, they are not liable for any taxes because whatever is those $950 that they're taking out are considered withdrawals from the business. Okay. So for purposes of calculating, oh, sorry about that. For purposes of calculating taxes, OASDI and HI, the partners are not included because those uh, $950 that are taken out every week are categorized as withdrawals okay so now that we've figured that out we can go ahead and we're going to get a total by column So we can have the two decimals. Okay. So now that we have this information, we can calculate the employer's OASDI tax and the uh, employer's HI tax. Okay. Because that's the second requirement. So this is the amount that is going to be deducted from the employees. <laughs> Excuse me. So that amount is going to be deducted from the employee's paychecks. Now the employer has to match that, okay? So basically what do we do? We get the total amount of earnings, which is the 20.37.69, okay? And we multiply by 6.2%, okay? Don't just use the amounts that are provided for the employee because there might be instances where there's rounding issues, okay? So you always wanna pick up the total earnings, the total taxable earnings for OASDI, the total taxable earnings for HI when you are calculating your employer's taxes. So your employer's taxes need to be calculated based on the total earnings for OASDI and HI. Okay, so we get the amount 2037.69 times 6.2% and that's going to give me 126.336 we're going to round that because that's a six. So that means the second digit is going to round up to 126.34. Okay. For HI, we're going to look at the HI taxable earnings. My total is 2037.69. I'm going to multiply it by 1.45%. Twenty thirty-seven sixty-nine times one point four five percent, and that's going to give me twenty-nine point five four six. That third digit is a six greater than a five, which means I'm going to round that second digit up to a five. It'll be twenty-nine point fifty-five. Okay. So in this case, the amounts of my employees' withholdings and my employers is the same. Okay. But remember that the calculations are different. In this case, the calculations are done on an employee basis, okay? And in the employer section, they're calculated based on the total earnings for OASDI and HI purposes, okay? So it is very important, first of all, when you're solving these problems, that you make sure that none of the employees go over the wage limit uh, for OASDI taxes. If they do, remember anything above 147000 will not be taxed for OASDI purposes. Okay. Make sure that you refer back to those sections. You know, in this case, chapter three does not talk about partnerships. Chapter two does. So you need to go back to chapter two and review the section in partnerships. Okay. 
If you don't recall that, what would happen? Students will calculate the taxes for the partners and that would be incorrect, okay? So that is basically it. The calculations are fairly simple. It's just a matter of identifying what is taxable and what is not taxable, okay? So that is it. If you have questions or concerns, please do not hesitate to contact me and until next time. Thank you.